Beautiful on face. Welcome to the Eddie You Show. It's the Eddie You Show. Whoa, whoa. What's up, man? I'm the host, Eddie Fuse. Welcome to the Eddie Fuse Show. My guest is King Vay. How you doing today, man? I'm good, my guy. Good to see you, man. How you feeling? Likewise, man. I'm good, man. You Bless. good? You yeah. good? Man, Bless. look, man. I've been hearing a lot of great things about you. Like, your success is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Vay, right, man, like, what brings you to the show today, man? Like, what's going on with you, man? Like, what you got going right now, man? Um, I got a lot, sh a lot of shit going on right now, actually. But um, I just came to, to kick it with my guy Eddie Fuse. Chop it up you know? with your man one time. Guy, yeah. That's what's up, man. So it's a lot of people, you know, that want to know who you are. You know, what I'm saying and what you've done in your career. So I took my time, you know, what I'm saying to put a little <laughs> gameplay together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the people can really relate with you and know, you know, what I'm saying not only that King Vay is only a, a producer, uh, engineer, but he's a drummer. He's a mentor, you know what I'm saying? He's a father, he's a family man, you right. know what I'm saying? There's a lot of a lot of attributes <clears throat> under your name, you right. know what I'm saying? So, um, I'm going to jump right in, man. Let's talk about the Starlights, uh, the beginning of your career, man. Uh, the Starlights was a gospel group. Um, my mom and dad had, my dad played the, uh, my dad played the guitar, and uh -huh. my mom sang, and it was like a quartet group, and uh, that's basically where I started playing the drums. I started playing for them when I was five. Wow. Yeah, and... Uh, that's where it started. Five years old. Yeah. Man, so, I mean, in the midst of you, you know, playing at five years old, like, so you started at five, and uh, I don't, you don't have to, you don't have to tell the people your current age if you don't want to, but the age that you are right now, you know what I'm saying, from five to now, you're still doing the same thing, you know Absolutely. what I'm saying? So you really had a true passion for this. Absolutely. How does it feel, Even man? before five, though, like, I got pictures um, with, like, I'm sitting down with a diaper on with two objects in my hand with a box or some shit or a pot. Like, my mama used to tell me I used to break her records. I used to put them on pencils and play them like symbols and shit. Like, it was before five, but five is when I actually was playing for somebody and actually, you know what I'm saying, playing. Wow. Okay, okay. Um, I've also did a little more research, you know what I'm saying, and um, I see that you had won uh, a regional final at the Guitar Center. Yeah, when you were I 19 won, years old, I won two. You won, won two. The, the first time I won, I was 19, and then the second time I won, I think I was like 23 or something like. So that. like, playing at Guitar Center, did that give you like a lot of exposure? You know what I'm saying for your career? Yeah, it gave me. It landed me on my first tour. On your first, first tour? tour that I ever did. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And do you want to disclose? You know who was your first tour with? Um, the first tour I ever did was with a gospel group uh, by the name of Remnant. Um, it was with Randall Cunningham. It's actually the name of his church now. But um, wow, yeah, it was. He, he started off as a group, <clears throat> and he used to do Bible study on on Wednesday, I believe it was Wednesday or Thursday, at his studio. Mm -hmm. That's where his church started from. But Randall was the first um, the first tour I ever did. Wow. So cool. transitioning, you know, from gospel music and you know touring with a pastor. Uh, also an NFL athlete who was very successful in the NFL as, as well. Um, how was it transferring, you know, from gospel to more of a worldly sound? Um, the first secular gig that I did um, was Shante Moore and Kenny Lattimore. Um, and it was real R&B is kind of like, kind of like gospel. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it really wasn't really that big of a shift at first, you know. So, mm -hmm. like... Um, I, could, I guess I adapted kind of. It was know, pretty easy of, for yeah. you to switch over. Kind yeah. of. <laughs> okay, I can dig it. To man. the gospel thing, yeah. But as I started playing hip hop music, when I started playing for like rappers and shit like that, it was totally different. Yeah, man. So I mean, so how's that atmosphere, man? When you <coughs> when you in Dre's nightclub right up the street on the strip, and man. you got all your people from the neighborhood coming to see you play, man, and everybody rooting for you in the crowd, man. Like, how does it feel to see that kind of love, man? When you um, do your thing, man. Shit, man. Um. I actually, man, I can't answer that question, right? Because it's like, um, let me see how they explain it. 
it's like a light or something go on when I go on stage. Mm -hmm. Like the shit that happened on stage, I have to actually watch that shit afterwards, like via video or some shit like that. Like niggas would be like, "Oh, nigga, you did such and such on stage." Mm -hmm. I'd be like, "Oh shit!" Oh <laughs> <laughs> shit! Because like, you're living yeah. in the moment. You're yeah, enjoying life exactly. right now. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's like. I also watch you, man, because, you know, we're business partners as well. You know what I'm saying? We yeah, happen to be yeah. business neighbors. Exactly. So, you know, so I watch you come in and out the city a lot, man. And you're doing a lot of work, you know, uh, with 1500 or nothing mm -hmm. in L.A. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My brothers. How is it? How is it, you know, being that guy that comes from Las Vegas, going to another city and you constantly putting in that work and that grind? You know, are you motivating your people around you? Like, or how are they taking you doing that, you know what I'm saying? Oh um, man, that's um that's kinda tricky, right? Um, cause a lot of times I try to motivate people or I try to say things that I think will motivate people and they take it the wrong way. Mm. You know, so like a lot of people think I'm cocky, a lot of people think I brag a lot. And um I grew up in church and the Bible say tell her the goodness of Jesus, you know, every everything that he did, so I feel like that's what I'm doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm right. just telling my blessings. You know, if you want to be mad, be mad at God because he blessing me, not you not, know, me. not me. Right. <laughs> you Absolutely. Me? I can understand so, like, that. I kind of shy away from, um, like, I guess, telling people shit like that. But it's certain people that I feel, you know, I, I can feel a vibe. You know what I'm saying? And if it's something that I can do to help then, or say something, then that I do that. But it's not a lot of people that... um that I really deal with. Mm. Well, but, seeing that seeing that you're on the level that you are, you know, working <clears> with uh, Grammy Award winning artist uh, T.I., mm -hmm. seeing that you work with him hands on, do you see that uh, a lot of hate coming your way? <coughs> Absolutely. And how do you deal with the hate? Uh, now I ignore it. I'm I'm getting older now, so I ignore a lot of shit. Sometimes I I like I snap. I know everybody see me on Facebook snapping, but like. It's calming down because I'm getting older and um, like shit. Like I guess, like after you after after a while, you just realize that shit ain't that it don't really mean nothing. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's, it's just, beneath you because you're already plateaued on your horizon. Not even that, cause nobody's beneath me. It's just like the the, the negative shit just don't matter, cause mm -hmm. it doesn't do nothing for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm I'm human just like everybody else, but so kind of like <clears> you, you want good energy around you. That's it. That's all. Positive energy. That's it. That's it. <laughs> All right, let's talk about your projects, man, that you got working on right now, that you're working right, with right now. Um, my projects, I'm working on a project. I'm working on two projects right now. One of them is um, actually probably like 95% finished. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called 1983. And um, shit, it's just a bunch of stories of, you know, I was born in 1983. There goes the age that we um, tried to hide early. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, 84, man. man, so, you know, we right next door. Yeah, I know? was born in 83, so, shit, I just went, man, my mom passed. I talk about my mom passing, my dad passing, my kids. Uh, growing up in the hood, um, making it out the hood. Yeah. Like, just everything. But it's those things really those things help build character. Exactly. You Definitely. know what I'm saying? You know, I haven't endured that kind of pain. Right. But I'll tell you that as a friend that, you know, I could understand where you're coming from and that, you know, hey, man, I pray for you. And, I yo, appreciate you know, it. My blessings, bro. <coughs> I appreciate Definitely. it. You know what I'm saying? Um, you yeah. got a record that you sent me called Glow. That's on my legendary project. Mm -hmm. I did the night. See, I, I said the 1983 project is 90, like 95 percent done because I did it and um I was working on it last year, and then I got caught up working with everybody else, and then I started working on it again. And by the time I finished, mm -hmm. it was like summertime. Right. And it's like I try to cater to what people want to hear as well as put out good music, and I just felt like it wasn't the time to put that project out. Mm -hmm. So I started working on the Legendary Project, which is more fun. It still got substance to it, of course, but it's just more fun. You know, yeah. you can ride in the summertime and let you top bag you know play some music no doubt man well i'm gonna jump into this record that you brought in man um glow man you want to go ahead and announce that man who's it Everything um like this record is unreleased uh, i don't even think this is the mixed or mastered copy but we're gonna play it anyways it's glow off of my legendary project um it's featuring emerald nagase i produced it um wrote it and performed it <laughs> 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 yeah so <clears throat> Yeah. 
Young nigga got the glow, always ready for the show. First to do it, Curtis Blow. Hugh Hef with the snow, hella nice with the flow. I was really trained to go, running off with your hoe. She be giving me the dough, I don't really wanna though. Yeah, I know you see me shining. Trying to hold me down, and I'm just trying to fix my crown. Yeah, yeah. Sitting on the throne, got the baddest bitch around. Yeah, yeah. I got the green light on you, nigga. So and so, yeah. Finally, my time to blow. Yeah. Young nigga got the glow, doing shows around the globe. Nigga better watch a hoe. I don't do the shit for show. I'm just trying to get the dough. Yeah. Ready for the show. First to do it, Curtis Blow. Hugh Hef with the snow. Hella nice with the flow. I was really trained to go. Running off with your hoe. She be giving me the dough. I don't really want it all. Yeah, I know you see me shining. Shorty, I got the glow. We keeping them high like a line of that blow. Smoking that pressure and leaving it slow. My time is too precious, I can't let it go. Just cop me a cube in the piece on the way. You can cry me a river, I can't let it go. Bitches on bitches, and I got the glow. And that nigga so wavy, should build me a bar. You see me shining, I look like a star. Might do something petty like Bob Jabbar. They give it the van, it's cousin Jabbar. Then buy it again, so you know who we are. Hey, Zeus on the rope, man, you already know. They pray to the guys that that nigga don't blow. They pray to the guys that that nigga don't grow. But they already know that I stay on go. 702. I'm the key to the strip These niggas just lost and they can't get a grip Too many drugs and they wanna be pimps And fuck niggas too, nigga, you're not exempt It's real on the line and I sign it in print And I'm breathing on niggas like they're through a vent You know I be shining in any event And the glow is defined, so do not assume Whoa. Yeah, I know you see me shining I know you see me shining I know you see me round the town with the glow All around the city stuck, yeah, I got the glow I know you see me shining Yo, that was hot, bro. Yeah, I appreciate it. For yeah, real, you cooked all of that? Yeah. The whole thing. whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> King Bay, man. For real, yeah. man. Seriously. So, like, man, like, when you and your, when you and your, uh, your glory, man, your essence, and you cooking up this kind of work, man, like, what mind state are you in, man? Like, what puts King Bay in his mind state <laughs> to do a record like this? We... <laughs> 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 a bunch he of is weed. honest. At least you honest. Hey, man, he said listen. it's weed. Hey, listen, no, honestly, man. Sometimes <laughs> I go in my studio and like I smoke so much weed, and like I go in the studio literally at noon or like I never go in the studio that late. I go in the studio at probably like eight o'clock every morning. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I won't even start making a beat or writing a song or doing anything till probably about noon, one o'clock, because mm -hmm. like I just go off vibes. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'll sit there and vibe out. I'll play music. I'll watch shit on YouTube, documentaries, all of the shit until yeah. until the vibe comes. And yeah. then, you know, by that time, I'll be in the smoke four or five That's months. how you creation. <laughs> it's, it's like it's manifesting. Exactly. 1983, man. What's yeah. up? What's up with that project? Uh, that's the project I was talking about, man. Um, I'm really just telling a bunch of stories, man. I, um, I went away from the usual songwriting, um, you know, concept come up with a cool concept type of thing. I just really thought about shit that was going on. Um, it's a bunch of soulful beats. Um, bunch of love in there. Bunch of love. That's what's up, bro. We Everything's not positive, though. I kind of feel like, I kind of <clears throat> feel like uh, music has, like, really lost the essence of the soul. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, it's like we all depending on do the beat slap hard enough. It's, it's you know gimmicks. Like, it's like it's gimmicks, really yeah. gimmicks and what's the fad that's popping right now but yeah. good music don't ever you know it never dies out yeah yo before i jump into this next record though man i got one more question for you man and then you know so we're gonna wrap this thing up after the record but um how do you feel about las vegas beat battles man 
Um, like, is it relevant? Like, is it necessary? It could be. It could be. It used to be, but it's not fair. And I don't like. I don't be wanting to shit on people, but it's not fair. It's just honestly not fair. It's not fair. No, it's not. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna put nobody. No, we gotta do that. that. You know what I'm saying? It's not fair. Do you feel like there's a way that we could probably create a platform? Yeah. That could possibly make it fair? It definitely is. It is? It definitely is. Yeah, well, I'm looking to do something like that in the future with King's A, man. Let's go. Let's go. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to just give you an example of the beat battle not being fair. I won, like, four beat battles. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you know, um, they wouldn't let me be in the beat battle, which was cool. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so he made me a judge. And one night I judged the beat battle. And I promise, I'm not going to say no names or nothing. But it was one guy who clearly was over here in his this lane. And everybody else in the B-Battle was over here in this lane. Mm -hmm. This guy was, this lane over here is the good lane. Uh -huh. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> this is the good lane. And everybody else was clear. It was not like, not, not, no bullshit. It wasn't close. Mm -hmm. I had a session at the same night. So I came to the B-Battle. And if anybody went to the, one of the B-Battles, everybody know that shit be all fucking night. So I went, I judged the first half of the B-Battle, and then they put the, the 30 artists that they had up. <laughs> so I had to shake, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But when I was there, it was this guy way over here, this guy way over here. I got on Facebook the next morning, and it was a big old rant from this guy that was over here. So I looked and seen who won the beat battle, and it was one of the guys that was over here who just so happened to be friends with the guy who threw the event. Yikes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's quite obvious. But to argue against that, I fuck with Bozy T, and Bozy is dope, and I feel like when Bozy win, he deserved to win. No doubt. And I believe the same shit, like when I was in the beat battle, like you can't cheat Bozzy. Can't cheat him. Because in all actuality you have to you have to see the talent. You gotta see the difference between this and that. You know what I'm saying? Like if you wanna cheat him, it's gonna be a blatant like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was the same thing with me. Like I, I knew they didn't want me to win, but at the same time, like, y'all really gonna pull y'all really gonna pull that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's one crazy. of those. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's the way the game goes, man. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes <clears throat> it's uh I hate to say it, but it's politics and a lot of different things in life. You yep. know what I'm saying? And um you got to pay attention to him, you know? Yep. Um, King Bay, man, I really appreciate you being here, man. I'm about to jump into this record, Memories. Yep, Memories is um, shit. Um, it's another record, unreleased. Um, I don't think it's mixed and mastered, but I brought <laughs> it anyway. But it's another banger. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a song you just talk about a bunch of shit. People I lost, shit that really happened, nothing is false on this song. Okay. Let's jump into it right now. <laughs> Mama made sure a nigga eat I remember playing in the streets OG came through Show me how to do what to do Never talk to boys in the blue Make sure the money come through Got drank, pull up, good weed, roll up I'm just trying to make it through All the little pain that I've been through Mama died, papa died Can't lie, broke a nigga heart Stay strong, hustle hard Grind till I make it to the top All these memories Memories, all these memories. Graduated, skipped college. Don't mean I didn't get the knowledge. In the hood, on the block, uncle strung out on the rock. No lights, project. Granny always knew what was best. Always knew that life was a test. Took shots, bulletproof vests. In the streets, dolo. Came up so low. Nigga used to couldn't get right. Now they want a piece of the pie. Grabs die. Socks die, starting doing songs in the booth. Niggas start showing me the truth. Didn't really know what to do. All these memories, memories, all these memories. Thug life, fuck 12. Put my little bros on the shelf. Gave my nigga 25 to life. Wish he 
stay home that night, stay down, came up, G code, never fold up, always stay true to the game, still they put dirt on my name, short days, long nights, short stays, long flights, when I was young I didn't have a clue, that I would make my dreams come true, auntie died, my son died, still a nigga had to stay strong, live life, move on, young king sitting on the throne, all these memories, Memories All these memories I got a bridge that I put on here yeah. too All these memories Oh, you added a bridge to it? Mm -hmm. That's hot Yo, man, that was That record has so much, like So much love inside of it Like, the message is so powerful Like, it'll fly past you If you really don't know you really though You know what I'm saying? Like, you really gotta know you to know like what you've been through, you know what I'm saying? Some of the messages that you're discussing, you know what I'm saying? Through there, like it's really, it moved me, you know what I'm saying? Even though it's up to date in this current music as well, mm -hmm. but the message right. is so powerful that you was able to deliver it the way that you delivered it, you creative as hell, bro. Appreciate it, man. Creative as hell, Appreciate bro. it, bro. For real, for real. Appreciate it, my guy. King Bay, man. Go ahead and get the people your social medias, man. Uh, shit, uh, social media, Vajon Hill. Damn, my my real name <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> Vejon Hill on Facebook. Um, King Vey on Instagram. King Vey in the number one on Snapchat. Um, they kicked me off of Twitter, so I, didn't, I and I haven't made a new one because um, I just don't feel like trying to get uh, no followers and all that shit. It's too much. <laughs> Uh, what other social? That's really it, man. Um, I'm building another. Um, I'm I'm in the process of building my uh my new website right now, so I'm not gonna give you all the information to the old one because it's trash. Um, that's it, King Bay everywhere. No doubt. Invasion on Hill on Facebook. No doubt, man. Well, I appreciate you stopping in to the Eddie Fuse show. I appreciate you um, having me. Give me your updates when you have updates, man. I'll share them with my people, man. Let the public know where you at so they can come participate. I know you'll be out at uh, Dre's Nightclub here and there sometimes doing mm -hmm. your thing. So give us those updates, man. We got you, I man. got you. Appreciate, Appreciate you. you stopping in, bro. Beautiful Las Vegas. Welcome to the Eddie Hughes Show.